हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल आई एम डॉक्टर हिमांशु गुप्ता एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फ्यू क्वेश्चंस ऑन न्यूरो ऑप्थलमोलॉजी सो बिफोर डिस्कसिंग न्यूरो ऑप्थलमोलॉजी आई वांट टू आस्क यू हाउ इज़ योर प्रिपरेशन गोइंग यू कैन कमेंट इन द कमेंट सेक्शन बिलो एंड आई विल एडवाइज यू दैट यू स्टे काम दैट यू स्टे काम इन दिस लास्ट फ्यू डेज don't worry too much don't think whether you will remember anything in the exam or not don't waste your time don't waste last 6 days worrying about anything just try to utilize study as as much as you can study whatever you can manage don't try to read any new things now read only the things that you have learned in the past okay and if you can give one grand test it is my suggestion that you give at least one grand test before neat pg this is because giving one grand test will give you a momentum before giving the actual exam but if you get depressed by your marks if you get depressed by your ranks then you don't give grand test but if the marks and ranks doesn't affect you then it is very good it is helpful to give one grand test so also you can suggest me topics that you want to cover in the last 5 days you can tell me in the comments so let us begin our discussion so visual field defects just remember visual field defects will be opposite to the retinal or visual fibers lost if the nasal fibers are lost then the temporal vision will be affected if the temporal fibers are lost then nasal vision may be, will be affected in optic nerve defect optic nerve defect there is complete loss of vision of one eye so if this is left this is right there is complete loss of vision of one eye in optic chiasma lesions in optic chiasma lesions there is so there are two fibers the nasal fibers cross the nasal fibers cross and the temporal fibers do not cross so in optic chiasma lesions there is a damage to nas nasal fibers nasal fibers of both sides so there is bitemporal hemianopia bitemporal hemianopia okay and optic tract or lateral geniculate body or optic radiation lesions in optic radiation lesions or optic tract lesions temporal fibers of one side temporal fibers of one side and nasal fibers of the opposite eye are lost so there is homonymous hemianopia homonymous hemianopia right homonymous hemianopia so in incomplete lgb lesions what we see keyhole defect keyhole defect so <coughs> when there is damage to temporal lobe optic radiation which are inferior radiations inferior optic radiations so they are inferior so there will be loss of superior superior vision superior homonymous quadrantanopia it is also known as pi in the sky pi in the sky parietal lobe lesions friends bomb's loop what is the defect you see the defect is inferior homonymous quadrantanopia inferior homonymous quadrantanopia because these are superior radiations superior radiations so visual cortex defect if only the tip of visual cortex is damaged which is due to the lesion of which is supplied by middle cerebral artery then only part of the vision only the macular <coughs> vision is lost but if there is intermediate visual cortex defect when it is due to occlusion of posterior cerebral artery there is homonymous hemianopia homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing with macular sparing with macular sparing so optic atrophy coming to optic atrophy it can be of three types primary secondary or conjunctive primary optic atrophy there is no antecedent 
optic disc edema or swelling there is no antecedent optic disc edema or swelling the causes are optic neuritis tumors trauma hereditary and toxic you see in optic primary optic atrophy the margins are well defined the margins are well defined and the disc is chalky white chalky white in secondary optic atrophy secondary optic atrophy it is due to atrophic atro- optic atrophy after disc swelling after disc swelling it is seen in papular edema and papillitis okay so you see the disc margins are not well defined they are hazy margins hazy margins and also the optic disc is dirty white dirty white okay so coming to secondary optic atrophy it is due to retinal disease retinal di- optic atrophy due to retinal disease can be seen in central retinal artery occlusion pan retinal photocoagulation and retinitis pigmentosa retinitis pigmentosa so coming to optic neuritis coming to optic neuritis it is of three types one retrobulbar bulbar neuritis papillitis and neuroretinitis remember that in retrobulbar neuritis the patient sees nothing and the doctor sees nothing and in ret- retrobulbar neuritis you see relative or friend pupillary defect Be- the patient is not seeing anything due to optic neuritis and the doctor sees nothing because there is no changes on the disc no changes on the disc okay and in neuroretinitis there is <coughs> macular star formation macular star formation what are the causes of optic neuritis multiple sclerosis neuromyelitis optica viral diseases like adenovirus sarcoidosis so you have to remember the clinical features of optic neuritis clinical features of optic neuritis there is sudden painful loss of vision painful loss of vision okay there is marcus gun pupil marcus gun pupil or relative afferent pupillary defect okay so what is relative afferent pupillary defect it is in this you do swinging eye test swinging swinging flashlight flashlight test so what is swinging flashlight test in this you will show torch on one pupil okay torch on one pupil and the pupil of that side will constrict okay now when you uh, show the torch on the other side when you show the torch on the other side the pupil of that eye should should the pupil of that eye should constrict but it is dilated it is dilated so even if the torch is shown on the on on that eye the pupil is dilated it means there is some apparent defect in the pupil so this is marcus gun pupil pulfrich phenomenon it is altered perception of kinetic objects altered perception of kinetic objects utov phenomenon utov phenomenon it is worsening of symptoms with exercise visual field defect is central scotoma color vision defect okay so what is papillary edema papillary edema is passive hydrostatic bilateral non inflammatory painless swelling of optic nerve head painless swelling of optic nerve head secondary to raised icp raised icp any raised icp that is causing swelling of optic nerve head the causes are malignant hypertension obstructed hydrocephalus venous sinus thrombosis idiopathic intracranial hypertension or pseudo tumor cerebri endocrinal causes is toxemia of pregnancy the mnemonic is movie movie okay so what is foster kennedy syndrome it is unilateral papillary edema and optic atrophy in other eye optic atrophy in other eye so let's discuss the pupils afferent pupillary defect is due to lesion in optic nerve optic nerve 
later apparent pupillary defect is seen in it is seen in optic neuritis optic neuritis <coughs> warning case pupil is due to lesion in is due to lesion in optic tract optic tract argel robertson pupil in this accommodation reflex remember the mnemonic a r p accommodation reflex is present and pupillary reflex is lost is lost ad pupil ad pupil in this affected pupil is dilated affected pupil is dilated it does not constrict on it does not constrict even on torch light what is horner syndrome horner syndrome horner syndrome stand uh, it includes the mnemonic is high maple high maple it includes hypochromic atrochromia iridis inferior eyelid elevation meiosis anhydrosis tosis and loss of ciliospinal reflex so thank you friends for watching this video